The next couple of slides are going to be on the toxicology portion of the chapter. Um, I hope you're able to watch this over the weekend, and then we can discuss it when you come in on Monday. So first, I'm going to define the term toxicology. Toxicology from your book is defined as the study of the effect of toxicants on the human body. A toxicant is a chemical that has adverse effects to the human health. Um, we've been talking about persistent organic pollutants and synthetic chemicals that are in our environment, many of them being pesticides. And so it's important that we're able to study these chemicals and see how they're going to impact and harm our health as humans. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to do because um, we can't just administer, administer these chemicals to humans and just see what happens. That would be unethical. So we have to find ways in which we can measure um, toxicities of certain chemicals. All chemicals, even safe chemicals, are going to uh, or can be toxic. For example, a one-year-old child um, could die of two tablespoons of salt. So salt, not something that you would think of as, of as a toxic chemical, in a high enough concentration could be toxic. Uh, a couple of years ago, there was a contest on a radio station, um, and it was about holding your wee for a wee. So it's pretty interesting to see, you know, people try and do this, except for it was extremely harmful. There was one uh, participant that had died from water intoxication. So too much of anything, even water, can be harmful to our health. Um, we look at toxicology uh, in two different ways. So we study acute toxicity and chronic toxicity. And so we like to, to see how chemicals can affect us in the short term, which would be acute, and also how they can affect our health in the long term, which would be chronic. So acute toxicity, adverse effects that occur within a short period of time after exposure to the toxin, easier to measure because it happens within a short period of time. Chronic toxicity is when we study the effects over a prolonged period of time. So you may be exposed to this chemical over and over and over again, and we would like to study and see the long-term effects. Um, some examples of acute symptoms, things that we can study, would be like headaches, nausea, vomiting, uh, coughing. For chronic, um, a, a really big one would be cancer, maybe kidney and liver damage, basically damage to our vital organs. So I have a couple pictures up here on the bottom right. So if you, um, let's say, eat some bad food and you get some food poisoning and you have an adverse effect to where you're throwing up, that would be acute toxicity. That would, that would be the study of acute toxicity or you're studying the acute symptoms that are happening there. Um, breast cancer is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the month of October. Um, we would be studying the chronic toxicity of chemicals that are causing cancer. Migraines, acute. Tiredness, acute. If you look at my cigarette up here, um, cigarettes can have both acute and chronic toxicity. The initial response to smoking a cigarette may be coughing, um, you're just wheezing, something along those lines, where the chronic would be lung cancer over time. Next slide, LD50. You'll see this as LD50, it's um, lethal dose 50%. The word lethal uh, means deadly. Dose is the amount of toxicant that's going to enter the body, and we have our 50% because we are looking at a number that is going to kill 50% of our test population. So here is your definition. Give me a book. A dose that is lethal to 50% of a population of test animals. Notice it says test animals. It's really important that I emphasize test animals. The reason why is we cannot perform an LD50 or we cannot get an LD50 from humans um, because it would be, again, unethical. Now, we have seen in the past maybe accidents 
or homicides with certain types of chemicals, and we can gather data that way. But we're really only getting the LD50 from testing animals. And specifically, we can test lab rats and mice. Um, it's reported in milligrams of to toxicant per kilogram of body weight. And it's inverse. So the smaller the LD50, the greater the toxicity of the chemical. The greater the LD50, the less toxic the chemical. And just to give you an example, um, let's just say I have um, 50 mice. And I want to test the toxicity of 409. I want to know how toxic 409 is. And so I give all of my mice, all 50 of them, a certain dose of 409. Then at first, none of them die. I go around, I give them a little bit more 409. Three out of the 50 die. I want to continue my test here. I give them a little bit more 409. 10 die. When we get to the point where 25 mice have died, whatever that dose is will be classified as the LD50. So it's the dose of a substance that's going to kill 50% of a test population. Some mice will die before the LD50, some mice will die after that number, but it's the dose where 50% of the population has died. And you can also see that in a graphical representation on the bottom right hand corner. Um, I have the LD50, 50% 50 of, the of the population or test population will die, the other 50% will stay alive. And so when we find this number, which is the milligrams of tox toxicant over the kilograms of body weight, once we find that number, we can determine how poisonous this um, chemical is. If you look at this graph here, this is representing a graph of an LD50. So the lower the LD50, the more toxic. I have two lines on this graph, so we can say it's representing two different chemicals. Chemical A would be the blue line, chemical B would be the purple line. If I wanted to find the LD50 of the chemical A or the blue line, I have my percent lethality on the y-axis. I would go up to 50%, so this is when 50% of the, the organisms have died. I can go over to my line, go over to my line, go down, and right here where the dose is, that is going to be the LD50. So that's the dose that killed 50% of the test population. If I wanted to find the LD50 of the pink line, I would go over to 50%, go over, go down, and that would be the dose, whatever it may be, the LD50 for the pink line or for toxicant B. By reading this graph, you should be able to identify that the blue line, or toxicant A, has a greater toxicity than the toxicant B or the pink line. Um, there are also other measures. We've looked at LD75, which it doesn't um, talk about this in your textbook. But if you were looking for the LD75, you, that would mean that 75% of the test population has been killed, you would go between 50 and 100, find 75, and again, do the same thing. Go over to your line that you've graphed and go down, and the same thing for the pink. But we're really focusing on the LD50 here. So here are some um, uh, selected chemicals in their LD50s. This is from your textbook, table 7.2. Um, notice that there's some um, chemicals and, and some things on here that you probably use uh, maybe on a daily basis or maybe when you're not feeling well, all the way to very, very poisonous and very toxic chemicals. So at the top we have aspirin, and all the way at the bottom we have strychnine. Um, caffeine, that may be something on here that you're, that you're uh, maybe surprised about. So too much caffeine can be lethal. Um, and you can probably guess, if you drink too much, it will make you go into uh, cardiac arrhythmia, and so too much caffeine can be lethal for us. Um, 
And actually, it's estimated that um, if you were to drink 50 to 100 cups, you could reach a lethal dose of caffeine. And in 2011, just a, a little piece of information, um, a 14-year-old died from two monsters. So caffeine can be lethal. But if you were looking at this table, I would want you to understand that strychnine, which is used in pesticides, nicotine, sodium cyanide, those have a greater toxicity than aspirin, ethanol, and morphine. So you should know that the lower the LD50 value, the greater the toxicity. And here, we're going to talk about the ED50. So it doesn't say it up here, but the ED50 is the effective dose, 50%. And so your definition, um, the effective dose that causes 50% of the population to exhibit whatever effect is understudied. So it measures the expectancy of a drug, and it's substantially less than an LD50. Um, we can measure biological responses. And if you look at the top right-hand corner, we could be talking about um, a medication or a type of um, drug. And here again, on our y-axis, we have our percents responding now because we're not going to say lethality since it's effective. And we also have our dose on a log scale. So um, we can be talking again about some type of drug. Maybe there's a drug that at some point it makes you fall asleep. And if you take too much of it, it causes death. So reading this graph, I can see that the ED50, or the effective dose, is substantially less than the LD50. And this is called a dose response curve. The threshold, when you're looking at this curve, the threshold is the maximum dose with no measurable effect. So here is the picture from your textbook. It happens to be the ED50. When you're looking at a graph, the ED50 and the LD50 will look very similar. The way that you would know the difference is what the question is talking about. So on um, graph A, notice where the threshold is. The threshold, again, is the maximum dose with no measurable effect. So here's the population showing the response. Because no response is shown all the way up to right about this point right here, right before the line lifts off the x-axis, that is known as the threshold. And you're going to have a nice smooth curve because we're going to graph this on a logarithmic scale. If you were looking for the ED50, you would go up to 50%, just like the LD50. Go over to your line and go down, and that would be the ED50. That is the dose that is showing the desired response for 50% of the population. If you look over here, we have two toxicants, toxicant A, toxicant B. Again, you can see the ED50 for both. You would go up to 50% over to your line um, and down, and this would represent the ED50 for A and for B. Um, if this was the LD50, it would look exactly the same. It would just say LD50, and the lower the um, number here, the lower the dose, the more toxic that substance would be. And we will go over children and chemical exposure in class. Very quick, just some um, limitations of measuring toxicity using the LD50. Doesn't include genetic factors, the species tested. Think about it. We are trying to extrapolate for LD50 um, the toxicity of a substance from a rat to a human. And that doesn't always work because some animals can be very sick from certain things that we're not. For example, chocolate. Chocolate's harmless to humans, but it can be very harmful to animals. Um, Environmental factors aren't included. Mode of administration, so if it is um, given orally, if it's injected, and the age of the sample of organisms. So all of those are limitations to this test. Along with that, you have animal rights advocates. So people are concerned that we're testing some of these chemicals on animals. 
Um, the FDA is beginning to phase out the LD50 testing, but it's still required by law, so we're having to come up with other ways to test chemicals for their toxicity. And have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you on Monday.